Have you seen other situations where sometimes things were this way as we know it today because decisions? We, we were no, we were amazed when a couple of us started going to the Internet Engineering Task Force in '89. I think was my first one. The Americans were actually exposing their thinking, exposing their technology, and saying, well, we don't quite know where to go next, come and help. Mm. And it's this open invitation at the bottom end of the internet to go, sure, you know, I'll happily contribute into the discussion. That idea of collaborative open source in technology was unheard of, because coming from a vendor-driven world, IBM had secrets. Hmm. Digital equipment had secrets. And, patents, and they want to protect patents, things. Patents, everything. Yeah. We still have the patents and hmm. so on, but there was never open collaboration. And, and I actually think the open collaboration produced a stunning quantum leap in technology and capability that no company could have done it. Hmm. It's kind of that level of creative thinking and forward thinking only really comes when everyone gets pressed by other people in the room going, but have you thought about, oh yes, well, why don't I think about this? And it leapfrogs each other in an amazing level. The web, as we know it today, was inconceivable even a year before that. We were mucking around with, with command line interfaces and this horrible thing, I think it was called Gopher. It was ridiculous, hmm. you know, search in ASCII. Um, the whole idea that you could make an ecosystem around the richness of graphics, the richness of local computing with the internet was just unheard of. CERN didn't invent it out of nothing. Like everyone else, they invented it from a collaborative pool of folk mm -hmm. pushing each other as to how far you could take this. I was doing a, a work, a video work with some folks from the team about TCP, the TCP yep. paper uh, that it was last year that did 50 years. And they were, uh, they were telling me something that I find really interesting in the science area, which is TCP was built w in the shoulder of giants, right? Even Vint Cerf uh, tells this. Uh, so they were continuing the work that was done by others. And you can add your own layer to the piling, in a sense. There is a thing about the internet, which is, I, th I suppose, at least in my generation, was revolutionary. And even now, it's difficult to explain. The technology is not in a book. Hmm. The technology is not frozen. And we're still lucky enough to be living at a time when most of the folk who were involved in the very early days are with us. The technology is actually a conversation. There's no right, there's better. Hmm. And it's kind of even the latest stuff, oh, well, TCP is now 50 years old, it's all over. Wrong. In the last few years, we've experimented with different flow controls with a thing called BBR. We've experimented with head of line blocking in this radically new protocol called Quick. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of TCP is by no means a solved problem. We've taken a technology which at the original stage did kilobits per second. It was slow. Mm -hmm. These days, we're doing hundreds of gigabits and kind of wondering, because the fiber guys know no limit, how do we actually use all that fiber capacity in TCP sessions? What do we need in the protocol? What do we need in the silicon on either side? How do we make things fly even faster? And we're now experimenting with something that I think is, again, challengingly difficult. Ultimately, when you can't go faster, you just do more of them and go in parallel. It's like the road system. Mm. You either have cars going at 1,000 miles an hour, dangerous, mm. Or you have four cars, each doing 250 miles an hour, less dangerous, ever so slightly. Uh, but you see what I mean? Parallelism mm. gives you capacity and actually allows you to do big solutions more simply. TCP is getting pushed into that space. Mm. We've experimented a few times with multipath. Quick gives us some experimentation. AI data centers, they're experimenting around the same place. So in all of this, technology is a conversation. It's alive, it's vibrant. You can't read the book and go, I know it, on to the next. You know where we're thinking, but then it's a case of join the conversation and add to it yourself and see how far your ideas work with everyone else. Hmm. And that's what I admire about the IETF. And in little places like RIPE and APNIC and so on, the same kinds of conversations are going on. Hmm.